And now, for our feature presentation. Are you ready? Streaming live around the world, this is Paper Cuts with Brad and Jay. Hey, what a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've already had two glasses, too. Of Jay, we've done, you've done so good, and you have to muck it up right at the end. <laughs> Jay's gray. He's all gray now. Look at his beard. <laughs> I, mean, I got grayer, right? <laughs> uh, everyone in the chat, thanks for stopping by and enjoying yourselves. We know you did. Just get here with us. <laughs> this evening, Bo Johnson stops by to talk about Bishop Ryder Lives, and he brought a whole gang with him. Welcome to the show. Oh, shit, Brad. This show is still happening. I have not Jay, closed was- down yet. That was fancy, Jay. You that, did. It, it took you like three fancy. months to do that. I know. Three, has, has, has it been three months since our last show? It's been like show? three months since we've had a show since <laughs> took I, you that I long you, to make that video. I totally forgot how to do this. And so we decided to start up again with a very happy, shiny unicorns oh, yeah. and, and butterflies and kittens kind of show, right? So that's that's what we're oh, going to yeah. talk about tonight. Nothing uh, dark here, no. Yeah. No. Welcome back, all of the Paper Cuts fans. So I know you missed us from all Nobody the fan, misses, fan letters that we got, you know. <laughs> Somebody was tweeting, like, what the hell happened to the paper cuts, guys? I think that that was you. You, That was you. All right. So, uh, and of course, our our honorary member, Megan Lucas, is here, by the way. She's here. But tonight's all about Bo Johnson, and he brought a gang with him. Uh, Dude, seriously. You got got to let us in on on, on what's going on here. I'll I'll let you do the introductions because you brought your gang. You got your book, your anthology coming out. You mm-hmm. had people lined up to contribute to this thing, and this is what we're going to talk about tonight. So, if you, do you want to do introductions first, you want to see what everybody's drinking first. I think Megan's already a little drunk. So, uh, <laughs> oh, she's giving me the evil eye too, by the yeah. way, just a tad. But yeah, it's up to sure. you, buddy. It's 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 your it's your shindig. <laughs> well, thanks, but I think it's everybody's shindig because these guys, these writers, knocked it out of the park. But we have Rob Smith, who uh, uh, I'm indebted to because I got a little story about Rob. He wrote this story for this anthology and where he took Bishop Ryder's story actually helped me write the Abram files, my last book. Like it gave me the through line. It was so, it was perfect. And his story kicks ass. And then we have James DF Hanna in the middle there and his story uh, knocks it out of the park as well. Uh, You know, writer and writer in his story is uh, sort of behind the scenes, which is, you know, some of these stories are writers right in your face. He's only mentioned a couple of times or he's in the background just lurking, which oh, I love uh, how many stories we have, how different they are. And Paul's uh, story is uh, <laughs> from a, a different point of view. And uh, it's uh, pretty monstrous. Yeah. And <laughs> Megan's is uh, Black Snakes, which uh, sometimes uh, stories collide and uh, a one legged man enters her story <laughs> and next is uh very timely uh uvaldi and uh what a lot of us felt when uvaldi happened and he uses writer as a tool to uh, extract some fun revenge <laughs> with i don't want to give too much away yeah give it all very happy very happy yeah, so i was waiting for you to, to, to yeah see how far you went <laughs> yeah, just just give it all up, Bo. Just, just no, I'm all not all giving up. it all up. Yeah. Well, here's but the reason I, and, and, Nick's story. No. But Bishop Ryder lives is just like these guys. All these stories are like between uh, my first five books and even the Abram Files with Rob's story. It's sort of they pull from between those pages. You know, it's not like he he's uh, come back to life. Ryder is dead in in my world or his universe, and so it's just a nice way to go back and and the call the the name wrote itself really. Yeah. Right. So, so how did how did this all come together? What was the the idea that you wanted to do an anthology? Well, have other people play in your sandbox? So there's two people uh, that I owe thanks to, and I I don't I can't remember the first person who put it out there, but uh, Alfred Alley, who is also in this uh, anthology, uh, asked me one day on Twitter, uh, would I let other authors write my guy? And I'm like, sure. But I, I took a Twitter poll, and so many people said yes. Uh, after that, I contacted Down and Out, and they agreed to it, and we put out the call. And two years later, here we are. 
There's a little so more to, to it than that. <laughs> so, did, so it was it was a all call or invitation or did you blackmail everybody? How'd you get people to to, yeah. to give so you I stories? Think I, yeah, I think I invited eight and then mm-hmm. open call. But then after uh, Hector, my uh, co-editor, he you know he was he was right. We got a lot. Of, it was a sausage fest, so he wanted some <laughs> some emails <laughs> perspective, which is he's right. So I put out a second call and just invited some. Uh, uh, female authors and uh, they knocked it out of the park like Megan was one of them Laurel Hightower and Mary Thorson and then I, I just want to mention uh, <clears throat> Ashley Irwin uh, sent in a story too and it was <sighs> such a good story but it just didn't quite fit the anthology it was a uh, mm-hmm. writer goes to hell and uh, <laughs> Gets to so Ryder, uh, what created Ryder is this Marcel Abram ended up uh, putting into motion that uh, his uh, mother and sister get killed. And long story short, in Ashley's story, uh, Ryder's in hell and he gets to kill Marcel Abram over and over for eternity. Oh, that's cool. And it, it was such a cool story and it was a great story, but it just, I wanted to keep everything above board. So mm-hmm. that's why it just didn't quite make the cut. Ashley was not the first, the only one you uh, rejected, right? Did you have others? No, I know. Or- yeah, he I would only say rejected that. Ashley. I was, I was gonna yeah, say because, yeah. because yeah. you, you, you don't a, know you don't know this, but backstage, <laughs> Ashley, come on out. Let's just yeah. drop Bo for you know, cut yeah. your story. I, I, I see what I did there. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, anyways, no, that, there was quite a few rejections, and it was not my favorite part. Uh, uh I never <laughs> want to do it again. Yeah. Did I just put you on the spot? Give us a list of the names you rejected. <laughs> <Bo>. <laughs> It didn't make everyone here cringe because you picked them over to some of the other ones. Go ahead. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. So let's just go around. We'll start with Rob since he's next in line. So what, Rob, what made you want to to write a Bishop Ryder story and contribute to this? You know, we're going to see the pictures that you're being blacked out. <clears throat> well, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, you know, I, kind of, I call Bishop Ryder kind of like Groundhouse Vigilante, and he, uh, and that, it almost like a he's almost like a, a comic book character to me, just that kind of uh, you know, that 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 Batman or that uh, you know, the, the vengeance, the um, but a street level kind of thing, you know, not like a you know, not like a Superman or anything like that. He's right. doing the work in the street, so I've never had a chance to play with anybody else's creation as far as you know, um, doing doing like a like working with Batman or working with uh, you know, uh, any kind of character, anybody else's character, so there was kind of a chance to do that and i uh and i just kind of fell back into my uh comic book roots and i, I pulled some from a, a comic book called grendel where they have a guy who wears a mask mm-hmm. and for some reason the the mask kind of a not a virus but kind of like that where it infects the the people who wear it they kind of start taking on the characteristics of the last person who wore it and then kind of they're okay, yeah they're worse or baser in, instincts, is, you know, and doing vengeance, but also doing violence. And um, I saw that kind of a little bit with Ryder, and I thought, man, and then this Grendel thing that they were able to go into like the future, and you could see different people carrying on the legacy of the person. And I thought that'd be kind of an interesting take on in, uh, seeing how how Ryder's uh, legacy lasted, and then and who took up the, the reins of the, of his uh, mission. And also, I'd like to, I, one one thing I'd like to say is, uh, in this anthology, great bunch of writers, but I have to say there's three Kentuckians in this, and uh, there you go. I, I don't know. It's a, you know, uh, me, James, Laurel. I mean, I don't know if there's something in the water in Kentucky, or maybe something in the bourbon. So the bourbon <laughs> first. first the, 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 so you, you guys already have like one internet line in Kentucky. Did That's you, right. Like, take turns. <laughs> yeah. We're on, right. So, you and turn, it's you know, dialogue. You use uh, the bandwidth. <laughs> And it's like, <laughs> you can't tell, but me, James, and Rob, me, James, and Rob, we're all in the same yeah. room, actually. Oh, yeah, you know, hey, over there. <laughs> yeah, knock on the wall there. Yeah, <laughs> Rob, what's the name of your story in the book? Uh, Echoes of Vengeance. Okay, great. And like, Bo, I, I think it was offline, but Bo was talking about your story. I like the direction it took and how it's very different from all the other stories because of yeah. kind of where it takes place in the timeline it was really cool. And I told I Rob this, it's, it never crossed my mind ever in one writer story I've ever written. And it seems like it's just sitting there to do. And Rob just capitalized on it. It was awesome. And I haven't read any other, except for uh, 
Chad's, or I mean, uh, James' story. Uh, <laughs> uh, James' story. Had to have, really had, good. To have had to have. Had to have. A completely different perspective than I took. I mean, like, I, I can't wait to hear everybody else's stories. I think it's going to be great. Um, but but uh, James' story is really, like you said, behind the scenes kind of thing. And it really is a different story than mine. And I guarantee Paul's is dark and <laughs> it is, it is. It's very metal. <laughs> <laughs> and Megan, I know, I know Megan. Crap, dark as crap, and Nick's Nick's always good, like uh, you know, 100 miles an hour. So I can't wait to see what everybody does. Everybody's got like, their own. Megan writes dark stuff. I thought it was like just a little, little she, bit. Hey, little, she didn't pull out bit. anybody's eyeballs in this one, so I was happy about that. <laughs> no, but she has some freaking snakes. <laughs> Those are for you, Jay. I know specifically. Yeah. So Chad, uh, James, Chad, uh, James, what was uh, what's your story about? <laughs> what what's your name? What is your real name? <laughs> yeah, who are you? You know, this is just fucking up my stuff with the fans. Now. <laughs> Christ. Right, now I got to start this shit all over again. Awesome. <laughs> no, so, uh, so my, I'm a big fan. So obviously I was like thrilled when Bo was, was looking for Bishop stories because I'm just going to state this early on. Bo has, there's, Almost no one who loves writers as much as Bo does. I mean, to be a writer himself and to be as supportive of, of other writers, uh, Bo's definitely at the top of that list. And so when he was looking for stories, uh, I had to jump at that chance. I also knew that there was no way that I was going to try and replicate Bo's voice with, mm -hmm. with how he writes Bishop. But what I am, so I was looking at, like, can, I was trying to figure out, can you bring Bishop Ryder into Kentucky? Well, yes, obviously you can, because <laughs> yes, three of us fuckers did it. So, um, but what I wanted to do was, I'm a big fan of stories where they take what is typically the protagonist, and they kind of set the protagonist aside. The protagonist is always like this small, marginal part of the story. And so this was kind of inspired by a couple of things, by the show Millennium. If any of y'all are 90s kids and might remember that, I knew Paul Garth was going to get that. Yeah. Um, it is my favorite TV show of all time. <laughs> oh, great show. Great show. Oh, my God. Been all rewatching time. it on DVD. Still holds up. So there were a couple of episodes where they kind of took Frank Black, who's the protagonist. And he's this very haunted character. D nothing like bishop at all but he's this very haunted tortured character and they kind of set him aside and they tell these other stories where frank is a marginal part of it and what i and, and, and another inspiration this is going back to what rob was talking about with batman was there was a great uh series i i remember it fondly i don't think they've ever collected it or done anything with it uh that was um can't remember the title of it, but it was it was a, they did a couple of mini series on it that was about was it, Gotham City, but it was Batman only shows up in like the final last pages. Was it Gotham Central? Got um no, it was Gotham Knights. No. Uh, Gotham, Gotham Knights. Knights. Gotham yeah. Knights. Gotham Knights with an N. Yeah. So uh I loved the idea of like telling a bishop story, but bishop is really kind of the smallest part of the story on a certain level yeah. what it is is really bishop's effect mm -hmm. you know how he th you know like how his vengeance you know how this is uh his crusade threads its way through this one particular character who's a sheriff uh small town sheriff in kentucky how his uh crusade threads it threads its way through uh this character's life and that was just so much fun to write, to get to, to bring Bishop in, but still tell this story, this other story without it trying, without, again, trying to sound like Bo, who has a very individualistic voice. I mean, you know a Bo, you know, you know a Bo Johnson story when you hear it. Mm -hmm. So it was just a really good chance to get to, to play in that playground and, but still kind of keep my own toys. And you What's killed it, man. What's the name? Of I your... appreciate that. Thank you. 
the name of yours. Uh, and also, if, if uh, just as a warning for anyone who reads this story, if you happen to have live, laugh, love signs in your house, <laughs> you are not going to like this story. Uh, it does not paint these people well. Because I fucking hate <laughs> not at these all. signs. So, yeah. So I, I think actually, I was, yours was the first one I read. And I, uh, what did I say, Brad, when I said it to you? I was like, I hate it. It's good, yes, I but hate I hate the, it. I hate the story. I hate it. <laughs> like, the I get a lot of I that. Jay. I get a lot of that. So. Like, it was great. No, it's good. I hate it though. So <laughs> the name of yours, Jay dark does... was the night. Cold was the dark. Right. Cold was the night. Dark was the ground. It was the ground. Oh, I mean, cold, uh, dark was the night. Cold was the ground. <laughs> Too many words. It's, it's, but it's, it's still good. And I've been drinking. But you'll hate it. <laughs> you'll hate it in a good way. Not yeah. that it would anger you. So. And I feel like for the most part, everybody's stories kind of just had Bishop as like a peripheral character for the most part. And they were kind of doing stuff like the effects of what happened with Bishop affects all these yeah. other characters, which I thought was cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Paul, what about your story? Uh, so my story is called The Last Takes of Remission. It takes place very close to the end of Bishop's life. Um, and, you know, I've known bow for years uh when i was at shotgun honey i was lucky enough to be part of publishing several bishop stories mm, okay. uh bow's just a great friend and when i heard that this was something that was happening i was like i think i really want to take part in that um the only thing is is i've read so many bishop stories and i've written my own stories like enough to know that like there is a very slim chance of what I do working in that context. So I had to find a totally different way in. Um, and so I ended up with a story that has uh, the single worst character I've ever written. Um, <laughs> he is, yeah, 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 just a, an absolute monster. Um, I also write stories, all my star stories are set here in Nebraska. I had to, so I had to find a way to get Bishop to Nebraska. Um, and it took me to this like really, really upsetting place. Um, then the fun thing was everyone's, you know, people have referenced Batman. And when people talk about uh, Bishop, they talk about the Punisher. I've always had a little bit of a different take. I feel like Bishop is more akin to like maybe say jigsaw or some like oh, yeah. Thank you. psychotic in <laughs> within uh within the universe who has plans and fallback plans and yeah. enjoys um playing with his victim so there might be a little of that in mind uh and then ultimately it turned into this technical question almost when i was writing the story i did so many drafts but it was like how do you bring along an audience with the single worst person you've ever created and give them an emotional reaction at the end when in almost all of my stories, the emotional climax is realizing that this main character who you've grown to come to accept and understand in spite of their flaws, that moment when you realize they're really, really screwed. Mm -hmm. How do you do that for the worst person you can imagine? um and so i found a fun little way to flip it and somehow it became the least violent yet most brutal story i've ever written and i'm glad to use fun in that too by the way <laughs> yeah it's a it's a great time rainbows unicorns <laughs> yeah jigsaw good time friday night <laughs> yes yes i'm glad you said jigsaw because you know writer always does seem to have sort sort of crazy contraption to inflict as much pain right. and violence as he can on somebody yeah, like a, little, yeah. a little something more yeah yeah like larue yeah. goldberg kind of you know <laughs> tortured him like i always got the punny the punisher connection kind of from the get-go when i first oh, when yeah. I read the earlier ones i was like yeah like a, a good ventilate anti but like jigsaw is just something special you know with all the yeah. contraptions that bishops had yeah. yeah so i'm glad i wasn't the only one seeing the jigsaw character at times oh i i see it all like it all started with uh, those death wish movies when i was growing up with charles yeah. bronson 
and then the Punisher, uh, people have said Dexter, they said Jigsaw, yeah, yeah, for sure. Dexter, Dexter would be a good comparison, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Megan, what about your story? Hello there, Megan. Why, hello. (laughs) Nice to be here for the first time ever. I know. Um, (laughs) I think we owe you like shirts and all kinds of stuff, don't we? (laughs) Bo Bo is such a sweetheart. Um, I don't know if you know that about him. He's very nah, I thought he was, thought um, he was a terrible is, person. Where is my street cred? Yeah. And as a fellow Canadian, um, hey. when he asked me um, to to submit something uh, for this, you know, anthology, plus, you know, I'm pretty much always uh, bitching and about not enough women in crime fiction, so I could not leave it on the table. Um, <laughs> but I don't write a lot of male uh, POVs like any really. Um, and almost all of my characters are victims of some kind who are trying to regain some agency. And so trying to like fit this, you know, Punisher type character with what I usually write, I, I ran into some of the same issues. I think that Paul did uh, that. I just, I wasn't really sure that my style uh, was going to be the right style. Um, but I, I think I kind of took the same tack as James um and and went with like a you know a, a, good job on that i had to work really hard um I, you know bishop is is maybe the the pebble in the pond but the story is the ripples um and so that's the story fair. is is called black snakes uh and that's specifically for jay because i know how much he loves snakes <laughs> i thought we were friends <laughs> you know <laughs> was it was it hard for you to write like in this world as far as like the violence and stuff because your stuff has violence but not like to this level usually unless no unless it's eyeball stuff right well you know what's funny um i've started reading this like really um small town southeastern ohio paper for Mm -hmm. like crime ideas and so that's where um the rubbermaid tote idea came from and nice. so i just like thought that was really fascinating and i'm not i don't want to ruin the story for anybody but there's a rubbermaid tote full of something gross and i wanted to <laughs> run with that uh but yeah i don't usually write like tons of violence um and so that was fun i guess to to do something a little bit different <laughs> fun the fun word again right <laughs> fun. Yeah. tonight's theme fun let's talk about <laughs> Okay. Nick, what about your story? And I'm going to oh, say, Nick, gosh, yours, Nick. yours yeah. was the roughest one. I'm just going to put it out there. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Your, yours it's is still, fun. Yours is fun. still Don't me. forget that. It's also it was, fun. It was, extra, it was extra fun. Extra it, fun. I, I should have known, known going into it because I've read your other stuff, obviously. So I'm like, oh, gosh, I want to see what Nick wrote. And <laughs> fucker. <laughs> well, it was it was fun. I mean, I've like Paul. I was part of the Shotgun Honey Gauntlet for a long time. So my introduction to Bo comes from years ago when you know he would kick his his stories over the transom, and you know he has such a distinctive voice. And obviously, like everyone else here has alluded to, when you try to adopt that voice, somebody else's voice is an extraordinarily difficult thing. So it's sort of. Um, kind of a process of threading the needle like you don't want to ever do a direct imitation but you want to do something that uh, paying homage is not quite the right term but it's sort of the one that's coming to mind at the moment where you want to kind of you know catch the voice but also put your own spin on as much as you can and when i was sort of debating what my own spin on this was going to be i was also completely infuriated by everything that happened to uvaldi and the fact that like the cops who sort of stood by and let that horror and that travesty happen certainly weren't getting away with it they were fired and reprimanded but it seemed that on a cosmic level that the scales really weren't adjusted and so this story gave me the opportunity to take bishop Ryder and like you know as like we were talking before it's not just him it eventually becomes the entire town but sort of get their cathartic revenge on the cops who in this case it's not set in texas it's set on the indiana michigan indiana michigan border but it's a similar situation and the cops are probably even more egregious and they they get that chance to um sort of enact that vengeance and also i wanted to i mean i've written a couple of vigilante stories over the years and what i wanted to kind of do with this one is show how it can almost kind of be a group activity in a certain way how like you start these movements and you see it in other kinds of vigilante fiction as well where like other people 
sort of begin to take it up. And I feel that there's so many Batman stories where Batman or Punisher, actually there was a huge run of Punisher Max in like the early aughts where the Punisher gets angry at people for going out there and basically following his example. But I kind of wanted to take that thread and play it out a little bit about what would happen if Ryder came into a place that was wounded and all these wounded people decided like, hey, this seems like, let's follow what this guy does. This this could mm -hmm. be fun. Using that word again, fun. Fun. <laughs> fun. You did get so excited when you were like, vigilanteism doesn't have to be a solo sport. Like, it doesn't. We I can all participate. Like, oh, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, he's into it. The young, the old, everybody, everybody. If you can pick up like a heavy object, like you're part of the game. <laughs> no, actually, that that ends badly for everybody in real life. So, so what you're saying is vigilanteism is the new pickleball. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. It's sort of like who was this serial killer in LA in the eighties? Um, the Night Stalker, where when they finally caught Ramirez. him, it, turn, it turned Ramirez. into like a group. Yeah, like before the cops arrested him, like the the pursuit through the neighborhood became like a friendly, fun neighborhood activity where everybody was like <laughs> taking their individual time to beat him down before they finally got cuffs on him. It's just yeah, you know, it's 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 amusing, kind of. But yeah, <laughs> that's sick yeah, before sort of way. before you were uh, here, Nick, in the back room, I was telling him that. Your story affected me so much that it created my own writer story with Uvaldi from your oh, story. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. Nice. So, yeah, I think it's cool. uh, I think it's in my next book anyways. I can't remember. There's so many stories. Bishop Ryder in space or, or what? <laughs> <laughs> He's never made it to space. Yeah. Okay. It's sort of like, um, like well, to go back to the Millennium one. reference, we've got a, what's, Osborus? what's that called with the snake yeah. eating its own tail? We've got that of Bishop, sure. Yeah. We've got that of Bishop Ryder stories now. We've got yeah. like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this loop of vengeance yeah nick i thought yours was interesting because the the villain in yours was someone who didn't actively do something bad they were like passively didn't do anything so mm -hmm. i thought that was an interesting choice for that mm -hmm. to be the villain of your story yeah and i mean it's it's i was sort of like as i was writing it very dimly in the back of my head i was recalling you know some college philosophy class of talking about like you know sins of omission versus sins of commission and like you know and all those ethics columns that you kind of see online about where people are debating like that kind of thing like you know are you complicit if you don't participate in something or if you stand by and let something happen and like the thing about bishop writer is that he's sort of like a, a a shark and so in the story he spends a couple of seconds like actually going into like just kind of tiptoeing around this ethical conundrum and then decides Meh, it's basically all the same thing and then <laughs> continues to roll forward at the vengeance i mean because the other thing too is you read a lot of and this drives me nuts you read a lot of crime fiction where the protagonist or the anti-hero waffles endlessly back and forth about the morality of what they're doing and should they be doing it and like there is a certain worth to that there's a certain weight and heaviness to that but also at this point it's also sort of cliche that the hero is going to like you know morally wrestle with themselves over some dilemma and like try to explore some larger philosophical issue and i just thought it was really fun for bishop to just kind of be like yeah eh, eh, thought about it nah, eh, nah. so yeah you know. <laughs> bo did you let it be known to each, to all of the writers like who you accept it ahead of time do they know who was going to be uh, I think I, I did it. You know, I wanted to say I at the same time I was going to send all the acceptance or rejections. You know, that's what I said to a lot. But there was a few stories where I'm like, dude, you're in. You know, uh, James was the first one that I did that on. Right. I can't remember all the ones I did it, but I did it on a few. Even though I wanted it to remain the same, you know, uniform because people would right, right. email me, "Have you made a decision?" And I'm like, I'm just going to do it all when the the cutoff date was or and then i had to push it back because there, <clears throat> there was we wanted to get the, the female voice or interpretation right. of writer in there so but is, there was a few everyone said, you know, go ahead is everyone familiar with each, with each other's work and their type and their history of work and all because i'm just wondering like okay rob's like okay well shoot i gotta step it up because megan's in it you know and then <laughs> yeah. megan's like well, oh I they, they didn't they didn't know they they didn't know until uh, okay, you know, I came in out came out with the with the table of contents, right? Or the, I got okay, that's, I got it. Yeah, yeah. But I think we all know each other's work. Like I've <laughs> actually published Rob and James and Paul at Reckon. Okay, and you've rejected me yep. at least twice. <laughs> and I'm, uh, it, which is I, fine. No, totally, I'm not. That, that's just the way the game. I just to throw that yeah, in there. Yeah. <laughs> and then Rob and I are co-editors at Rock in a Hard Place, right, uh, right. and we published. 
everyone in here except for Bo, who's never sent us a story. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know what? It might be time because I, it, I don't think I've been published in anywhere online since since before Brand New Dark. It just it's been at least five or six years since. It's no, because so now we just write. For, no, we. We did you. We did a story of yours at Shotgun Honey, like. A year oh, ago. sorry, sorry. You, yes, you did, but it was a Bishop Ryder story. Yeah, like I've written nothing for six years, but Bishop, Bishop Ryder's Ryder. universe. Yeah. Well, we will we will take it at Rock and Hard Place. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. I, I might. So this is live. He can't. He can't take it back now. It's live. It's, it's out in the world. Yeah. He, he has to accept your story now. Yeah. <laughs> So you just give him the most dog shit story and he has to put it in there. It, well, it, it'd be my, yeah. 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 No, no one, wants to, no one wants to see my dog shit. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. 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 Bo, who are some of the, the other uh, writers who have stories in this that are not here tonight with us? Do you want to go down to table contents or? Oh, yeah. So let's see. Well, we're missing uh, Sean uh, okay. <clears throat> Cosby, who, uh, his story is uh, sort of the legend of Bishop Ryder uh, being told like sort of like a John Wick style. And, uh, and it ends in a, a blast. It's uh, it, it was so fun. You know? <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> Hello, worm. Hello, worm. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, who else are we missing? Uh, Peter O'Keefe wrote this story about a, a hunter uh, hunting a hunter. And yeah. Uh, but I don't, I'm not, not quite sure if uh, the, the hunter hunting Bishop Ryder is all there in the head. And it, it, it may be, I always said it's a bonus if a story can make me laugh. And uh, Peter <laughs> made me laugh a few times during his story. So I hope you guys. I, I, we've been talking to him actually about a future show for him because I know he's got some yeah. other stuff going on too. So yeah, he got, well, he got maybe, we'll, maybe we'll ask him about it. So yeah. <laughs> and uh, Laurel Hightower, I will tell you guys, it is one of the. <laughs> grossest stories i've ever i loved it so fucking much she just went whole hog and she sort of used uh, i sometimes i use an unnamed narrator to to push a writer's narrative along because sometimes i just got to give exposition and it's just hard for writer to do it himself so i use a a third party and uh, she sort of did that and hers is like nick's uh, hers is timely uh, and i don't want to give too much away but uh trigger warning uh for abortion Anyways, I was gonna say I noticed hers was the only story with a trigger warning. Well, she asked for that, and I yeah, okay. for sure she wanted it. I did it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who else were we missing? Hang on, I don't even have the table of contents on me. Rob Rob Hartz was cool. The uh, Mary Th bless us, Miss. Oh, Rob Hartz. Oh, yeah. It's like I, I said. That... It's so. Uh, go ahead. I was say that was a cool perspective to take. I was gonna say like like the. Go ahead. Yeah, I think we're interrupting each other here, but uh, <laughs> Rob's story uh, from such that perspective of like a a cleaner, like I I never even mm -hmm. really thought about that, and that was such a cool angle to go at it. I'm going to pause now if you want to talk. No, we don't want to talk. You keep talking. <laughs> okay. so. I think there might be a lag. I don't know. Let's just and talk then, over uh, everybody tonight. Yeah, <laughs> just talk over everybody. Uh, Mary Thorson's uh, uh, story about uh, a mother's uh, uh, a mother's grief is uh, mixing it with Ryder was uh, uh, inspirational, I should say. And uh, she was the only writer to utilize. Uh, Bishops had uh, many partners over the year, but there's always been this one-armed Billy who has this uh, farm of uh, pigs. And uh, she utilized him. Not saying the pigs, but just Billy himself. Yeah. yeah. And then um, oh, Tom Lanes. So Tom Lanes, he writes. I, I say of of any writer I've ever read, Tom Lanes and me. I think we have uh, similar styles. Like he writes this Joe Ray. I don't know if you ever read Tom Lanes or whatever, but he's a. Uh, I don't say he's a vigilante. He's more of a scumbucket, but he writes him <laughs> so well. <laughs> and he sort of, he took on Bishop and a younger Bishop with uh, Batista, his first partner. And man, it's so like frantic and kinetic. It's just, it's, it's Tom Lane's story. And it's, it, it's so great. I loved it. And then uh, Jay Stringer, whose story, uh, the friends of uh, Reed Robson, I believe, uh, 
<laughs> it was so cool because I'm reading his story and I'm like, this seems familiar. But he went back into one of my old stories and implanted his story in a story I was telling. It was so cool. <laughs> it's place in the, this diner where Ryder is having a talk with Jeremiah Abram when they're first coming together. And <laughs> he did he did great. It, it, he has his, it, it's his own story and just Ryder and Abram are in the background. It's like an inception in moment. Another one of those. That yeah. I, I can't believe he pulled it off. Yeah. Uh, and Manny Torres is like another, uh, the legend of Bishop Ryder, which uh, he added humors into his story as well. And uh, he nailed it. And then I think that was it. I think that's all the contributors. Oh, no, sorry. Mark Rapise, who was a, a, an older bishop. Uh, it's called uh, Ryder Hears the Birds. And, you know, uh, a more contemplative uh, bishop writer until he's not. And that's <laughs> well, just to, just to uh, cause some controversy. Um, everyone you just mm -hmm. named, we have backstage because we're kind of pissed. You didn't ask. Them <laughs> no. To to the show so, <laughs> except for Laurel. You paid more We asked Laurel. We asked Laurel. She's like, fuck, no, I'm not doing that. So. <laughs> I'm in San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. So, Bo, did you give did you give all the authors like certain guidelines they had to adhere to? Like you yes. have to mention Bishop Wright or you have to no. have violence or this and that. Or... <laughs> no, I just I just broke it down. You have, you, broke kill, it. you have you have to kill somebody in your story. Yeah. It doesn't count. <laughs> no, I broke it down. I give them like a I gave them a timeline. Partners, I'm like use some of it, use all of it, use none of it. It's by, Bishop Ryder had to be in it. Yeah. You and I went a little bit back and forth, as I recall, on like the ways that like like sort of kill preferences where I, I forget I forget what my start point was, but it was not equipment that Bishop Ryder would have easily or whatever. So I changed it to just like him shoving a pitchfork through a serial killer's head before setting him on fire, which was nice <laughs> and lo-fi. Um, yeah. But I think whatever well, the original thing was was a little bit too sophisticated. Well, I think call. it was like I think people, people this like Bishop Ryder's never used a wood chipper, but everybody thinks he uses the wood chipper and I think that's what it was. Yeah. And I just said, well, he, he's never used the wood chipper, but, and that was, I think that's what we had talked about at one time. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, I can't it remember was. what it was. It had to be, be, be something different because he can use a wood chipper, but there was something else I think about uh, something he was about his mother and sister, something emotional that it was like, it felt maybe yeah. too much. He would give him himself to say in yeah, a story. I think that was it. Yeah, something there. So yeah, you you and Hector were doing. I mean, yeah, there there was some like you know like tweaks and nuances to the character because I mean you obviously I mean you know you live this character. So I mean mm -hmm. that's, and that's that's always good notes to have in terms of like tweaking that. Since you mentioned Hector, I'm supposed to throw yeah. a chair up in the air and be all like do a heel turn and and uh, yell that he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to make a thing. So well, I want I want to give I want to give Hector props too because I'm not the most computer savvy and. The editing process was like a little, I was a little freaking out because I couldn't figure out some of the stuff, how to, to get stuff to Hector. We eventually I did, but you know, but Hector had some great ideas and I'm glad that he did this with me. So being in the, wearing the editor hat, was that something new for you? Oh, totally. And I, I, I think I, I was in a, a co-editor at Out of the Gutter Online for about four weeks and I, and I, and I didn't care for it then and then this is probably the first and last time i will ever do an anthology uh, <laughs> i loved it i love the it's here and it's about bishop rider and these stories like i can't say enough how everyone everyone killed it like it's all thriller no filler and i know people say that but wait till you read it for uh everyone here when you were when you found out you were going to be in it did the story that you wrote wrote come to you pretty quick or did you have to like wrestle with a few different ideas in your head? Did you already have a Bishop Ryder story ready to go? <laughs> I was already angry. Like I said, I, I so figured, uh, yeah, so. just waiting for Bo to you know, say, Hey, Nick. Yeah, it was, I mean, I was, me a... I, I, yeah. I've always got a couple of stories like bouncing around and there are like kind of giant fragments. And so, hey, yeah. oh, look. Yeah, hey. is it just a still, <laughs> still, <laughs> still photo of them? Is Rob sitting yeah. in Sean's lap? Yeah, I think so. I, wow. I can't Bro, see him. Got really off the hook, like after I left. 
Is that from uh, public Wi-Fi? That's, that's <laughs> this it, is actually you're gonna, gross. Have, you, you're gonna have to break it down for me. I can't see anything. Oh, it's uh, uh, Rob. Sit, looks like he's sitting on Sean's lap and like a like a phone kind of picture him. It's just it's, it's kind of it's oh, they they must be. There's so many. What happens at the that have that particular that there's so many bars in Midtown that have that very particular lovely shade of like neon red <laughs> lighting. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what hole they're in, but it's it's definitely something like around the corner from the Port Authority or something like that. <laughs> they're gonna find them sprawled out on the West Side Highway by dawn. I hope they keep their, ca their camera on. We just follow them around the bar and see what's going on. Yeah. That'd be they already, they just awesome. disappeared. <laughs> yeah. They're gone. They're gone. Yeah. I guess the public Wi-Fi and auto shrunk in head or wherever they were wasn't all that. <laughs> It'd be great if they didn't even know they tapped in and that's just what they were doing. One yeah. the other tap you know, for fun. <laughs> like, oh, pocket dial into paper cuts. <laughs> yeah. The podcast butt dial. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like I want to ask. Found out. Go ahead, Brad. <laughs> uh, Nick, were you gonna say something? Oh, I was gonna say it reminds me of the Jinx, where he was still wired and on a hot mic when he like walks into the bathroom and washes his hands and like yeah. accidentally oh, yeah. misses the killing them all. Yeah, yeah. I just I wanted to ask. Uh, we go around again. What was everyone's favorite part of their particular story? Without trying to spoil the story itself, Nick, we'll start with you this time. Kind of hard, Brad. The other way. Um, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I'm trying just, to think what was the favorite part. I mean, the community involvement part, which when you read the story will become clear, was I think Carly mm -hmm. my favorite. Like it was almost like perversely heartwarming to me that like all the people <laughs> in this town like get together to do something horrible, but they're together, damn it. You know, and they're like they're they're they're, yeah. they're metaphorically holding hands as they do this horrible thing and everyone feels good. So that, that would be mine. Megan, what about you? Oh, um, well, oh shit! You know, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> You're on a podcast, man. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm just like, please let this be over. Please let this be over. Please, <laughs> like, like, I've been, I've been on this show too many times. She's already found out. <laughs> she should get a jacket like they give on Saturday Night Live. You know, oh, like, yeah. Like, 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 yeah. Where's my jacket? Like, yeah, some member jacket. Yeah. Jackets out. So, <laughs> time on here. <laughs> so the the title of my piece is called Black Snakes, and it's a it's a metaphor, but there's also a scene um, that includes a black snake. And I, you know, I'm I'm a transplant to the South, so I was not super familiar with them before moving here, and so <laughs> and so I didn't really like realize how useful they are um, to have you know on your property. But also, I wasn't aware of how like incredibly smart black snakes were and what they will do um, to sort of like keep themselves safe and, and uh, evolve. And so that was really fun to play with um, that sort of idea of nature meeting, um, you know, characters behaving poorly. If they were so smart, they would be snakes. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Plus Paul, Jalen. You? Yeah. The most fun part of the story, for me, it was. God, I'm I'm gonna be real honest. I don't think there's a whole lot that's fun in this. Story. <laughs> like, it's, I'll, I'll, like so. One of the most challenging parts of this story was, like, I'm not. I'm not a horrible person, and I don't. You know, there are certain writers out there. That's what horrible like, people say. <laughs> they well, there are certain there are certain writers out there, and what they want to do is they want to give you the most upsetting thing that they can imagine, and they want to put it on the page, mm -hmm. um, just for shock value. And for the most part, I think that's bullshit. I think it's a really poor way to write. Um, I think it's a really cheap way to draw out emotion. Um, and also, I don't really have any interest, like. I don't have any interest in saying, okay, what's the worst thing I can do? And now let me like make you live it. It just seems like passing trauma along back and forth and it doesn't appeal to me. So what I had to do in this story though, was make you think that I might do that. And then to pull the tension out of that. And it was exhausting and incredibly mentally drying and, I don't believe in 
like I'm not gonna be one of those people who sits here and says like your art should hurt or any bullshit like that. But I was so relieved when I was finally done with the story. Like that I wasn't that I was no longer in that guy's head. Um so fun. I can't say what's fun without giving away the ending, but most of it wasn't, and I'll put it that way. Yeah, the fun comes at the end for sure. Yeah. That would be a good yeah. uh, tagline, though. Your heart should hurt. That's I'm <laughs> right on the cover. Oh, so <laughs> James, what was fun about your story, James? <laughs> <laughs> All, all of, of it. All of it. All of it. It's just, it's, it's, it, it was it's bringing into the Taylor Swift lyrics really towards the end. That was the best part. Um, no, so just as a side note, I, I read Paul's and I had read Paul's story and I was like, God damn it. Now I don't know that I want to do this you know, because I liked the I'm pointing in the direction he's showing on my screen. Um <laughs> Because I liked the story, I, I like Paul's story so much. But it, yeah, it's not a fun story. No, so uh, like my stuff is always like weird connective tissue issues. Um, it's like four or five things that like randomly join together, and so it was figuring out a way that live, love, laugh signs <laughs> in people's houses and wall stencils and little Zen gardens. To combine that with a blind Willie Johnson song on the Voyager <laughs> 2 album. You know, like making those two things work together uh, was uh, was fun. But then also putting that putting the character, putting the the, the protagonist in this story in, in like that really dark, terrible sort of moment of like reckoning and decision at the end you know i always i always like to say my 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 genre is uh rednecks making poor life choices <laughs> and specifically kentuckians and west virginians making really tough life choices and so it was, it was making that character have to make that choice at the end was uh fun for me not fun for him but fuck him he's he's not real so you pulled it off man your story made me like <laughs> your your story made me laugh because you talked about a fine Italian restaurant with checkered tablecloths in Frankfurt. I was like, that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Frankfurt's fancy. Y'all are yeah, 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 We're okay. fancy. Yeah. We're fancy. So what, what, your story did, James yeah. McGee. what your story did to me, like now when I go to people's houses, I'm going to be looking for the signs and stencils. <laughs> and, and I'm going to start thinking things. Like immediately bad thoughts in my head, like what the where am I? And start looking in the basement stuff. So exactly, yeah. look yeah. in the basement and you, like you ruin, you ruin. I don't like to visit to begin with. You just made it worse. So <laughs> well, and, and and I'm gonna say I wish I had. I'm, I'm, I wish I could say, oh yeah, no, I had that planned all along. I did not have that planned all along. It just worked out as the story was being written. You know, so by the end, it was like, okay, yeah, fuck all these guys. So. <laughs> Rob, what about you, man? Well, <clears throat> I I have written um, stories in the horror genre before, but I'm more of a <clears throat> kind of a mood or like a like a cosmic kind of weird horror versus a lot of uh, um, blood, you know, uh, gore. So I kind of wanted to get mm -hmm. the that over with in the beginning, and that was I mean, it was my first thing was make, how can I go over the top? Because Bo, all his Bishop Ryder stories have. have I mean, I think he's he's done every act of violence you can do to somebody. So I was like, <laughs> what can I do that 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 will, you know, just like set the mood for the story for what I'm going to do? So that I mean, I start off the first sentence. I've got him set up like the you know Antivillian man. The you know the you know four his arms and legs are spread with chains and um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I, I throw in a pretty violent scene in the beginning. And then it, yeah, I, I can't get it that out of the way. I was kind of happy. That felt like Clive Barker to me. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I was like, man, I got to do this kind yeah. of horrific. So I'm going to try and do the first thing. And that's what I did. It was, uh, that was my, cause it's not easy to write that. I know people talk about, you know, um, like that, or, you know, like really other horror that's kind of, it's not easy. It's not easy to write that. Um, and make it, make it feel like something instead of just being like a, like, or a, like a Paul was saying, just 
for shock value. You know, you got to write it for. So it's kind of hard. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be subtle about it, but uh, you, yeah. I mean, it's, you can just do it. And it's just flat. But it, uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with that. And your story, Rob, discussion. at the beginning when I when I was reading it, I'm like, is this Ryder? This, this is sort of sounds like Ryder, but I don't think it's Ryder. And then it wasn't Ryder. So it was so cool how your story unfolded to where it went. It was beautiful. Thank you. And you said you said you like to kind of like to write the cosmic -y horror, and yours almost felt cultish in a way, like it could be yeah. a cosmic -y, leaning that way. It didn't, right. but you know, yeah, I started going the more kind of more it. yeah, cult kind of you know, kind of felt yeah. that <laughs> that way with the uh, <clears throat> in the cavern. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't remember whose story it was, but someone had someone's eyeballs cut open with like guitar strings, and that was the worst Whoa. story I've ever read. <laughs> Jigsaw. <laughs> It was either it was it was someone who it was don't accuse me of that, Rob. It was terrible. It was it was just like a brief mention. Someone got their eyeballs cut open with a guitar string. Yeah. And it made me cringe really bad. It was awful. Oh my yeah, God. I can't remember who like, that was. It was it might have been, well Sean mentioned a lot of killings without actually yeah. showing, so it might have been that. Yeah. It I, I mean, it might have been his. Yeah. But did you have a favorite kill out of all the out of all the other people's stories? Oh, they're all or my something favorite. like man, something man. I should have thought of that a long time ago. <laughs> well, they're all my favorites, like I said. But uh, <clears throat> Rob's story, like it, it, it changed things for me. Like seriously, like I was, I was, you know, I'd come off just I'm done with publishing. You know, I was gone for ten months, and then all these things were happening, and and Rob wrote this story, and I was, you know thinking about writing or I started writing as J Jeremiah Abram. And then he wrote this story and I had maybe a quarter of a book done. And then that gave me the through line, his story, like not his, what he wrote just allowed me to finish the Abram files, which spawned two more books. So I don't know. What was the question again? <laughs> Did you have a favorite kill that somebody else came up with? <laughs> not favorite, not off, favorite story. <laughs> I know. 25 minutes later. What was the question? <laughs> well, yeah, 25 minutes later, yeah. Well, uh, man, there, there's there's so many good ones. I, I have to go with Laurel Hightower. Like, I, I can't give anything away because it is so spectacular. You guys are going to love it. Wait, did he tell us he cut out or... I think he said they're all good. He's he's trying oh, okay. to he's trying know. not to pick a favorite. You guys I think you say he likes Rob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like my like my like yeah, like I tell you, <laughs> all, all my favorites. Yes. But I, I, I don't know if you did hear me, but Laurel oh, okay. Hightower okay. story. It, it is it it is crazy. I don't know if I cut yeah. out there or not, but yes. Uh that is my favorite, I would say, kill, and you guys are gonna love it. Like okay. It is crazy how good it is. I I can't believe no one's ever thought of it before. <laughs> Did anybody do the, struggle? Like, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go since, ahead. Yeah, since since Bo's here, like Bo, uh, I think it was a year and a half ago. He asked me to blurb the Abram files, um, and so I read it. I got an early version of it. I was reading through it, and Bo has a kill in there that I think I think actually two of my favorite kills ever are in there. Uh, there's the forklift. Um, which I do love my like wish. chef's kiss. It, it <laughs> honestly upset me. Uh, and then there's a scene where I think you just like throw 70 people out of a plane over the Grand Canyon <laughs> or something like that. And I'm just like, you have both yeah. sides of it. Uh, and it's, it's just, it's just so good. Um, no, well, thanks. one of, one of it's... my favorite, one of my favorite things I've ever done is, is a writer is coming up with the blurb for the Abram files. I called it Chainsaw Noir, uh, and I said yes. it to Bo, and he was like, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. Like, oh, man. I've, I've written my one true sentence. <laughs> I wish I'd have known it five, I wish I'd have known it five years ago, yes. <laughs> and it's its own subcategory on Amazon now, Chainsaw yeah. Noir. I think you and Todd uh, Robertson <laughs> called it that. Yeah, like. Jesus. Yeah, we both and we Man. both came to it at like the same time, which was the crazy thing. Yes, yeah, yeah, crazy. So, Paul, Paul, you kind of yeah. said this, but like when you all were writing these stories, with the subject matter being what it is, 
were y'all just like in this dark headspace the whole time writing your stories? Was it hard to get into the mindset of a Bishop Ryder story and you know all that comes along with that? I think if I'd chosen to go a different way in terms of the story I told, it could have been a lot easier on me. Um, mm-hmm. My my story like directly concerns someone who has previously escaped Bishop Ryder, um, mm-hmm. and if you know the type of people who Bishop Ryder is going to be going for in the first place, like it's not someone you want to spend time with right Mm -hmm. um so treating him like writing this character and presenting him in a way that felt real was honestly really fucked up like (laughs) i that story took a really really long time to write because uh you know i'd be i i live a full life i usually write at night after my family's asleep and i'd be like 11 30 at night and i'm like do i want to go spend the next 45 minutes with this guy absolutely the fuck not um and that's one of the reasons why it, it took so long to come together i think if i'd found a different way to tell that story it would have been more enjoyable but on, honestly yeah it was it was real rough what about for anybody else yeah mac and you mentioned earlier that you, know, you, you had to do a different spin on it because having you don't normally write from the male perspective. Did you struggle any coming up with how you wanted it, how you wanted to present it to stay with your Megan Lucas style? Well, you know, I, I, even in this, it's, it's a female, you know, protagonist. Um, I think that this story um, is actually not one of my darkest stories. And I, I think that's because um trying to balance the sort of like increased gore um, in the story compared to some of my uh, regular jams. But um, I, I don't know. I guess I don't know that I like I struggled uh, once I sort of figured out where Bishop was going to fit in the story. Um, I did have to get him to North Carolina uh, you know, which I went out of his natural area. Um, but I, I, we've been keep using the word fun, like ironically, <laughs> but I, my story, I was actually fun for me. Um, because it, I think it is maybe a little less heavy on the social commentary and some of that kind of stuff compared to some of my other work. I feel like I had the opposite of struggle. I feel like I struggled with other characters. I didn't really struggle so much with him just because um, he's so straightforward in a lot of ways. And like, once you have a character who's like all consumed with whatever they're working on, they're pointing in a certain direction, you kind of get the momentum behind it. Then I found it him very easy to write in a certain way. I mean, it was also propelled by like rage and fun. Um, Should we be but, worried about that? <laughs> yeah, actually. I mean, it's, 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 Funny was it because. was it too easy to write Nick? Was it too easy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's a certain. I think I don't know. I mean, it, you almost get into sort of like a George Stark, the Dark Half thing, where you know, if you write this stuff frequently, does it say something about you? Person that there's something kind of lodged in your personality that you maybe don't want to explore too deeply. Um, I don't know. I have to think about that a little bit. I don't generally think of myself as necessarily <laughs> like a person dedicated to vengeance, but you know, who knows? Maybe he's lurking inside me right now. Nick, well, is, I is it true you, that like, what it's worth. murderers uh, buy the Bishop Ryder series to learn how to uh, do certain murders or <laughs> hideously <laughs> elaborate? Murder? I hope yeah. not. And if they serial killer's handbook, yeah, I, I thought it was on Twitter yeah. someplace. I don't know. I just, just wanted to clear it yeah. up. So, because <laughs> you can believe everything on Twitter. <laughs> exactly. How weird everything, would it be, though, yeah. in all seriousness, if like some convicted killer had like one of your books? <laughs> right? No, no, it'd just be strange. You, 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 that would, I would, that would definitely bake my noodle. Like, like, what if yeah. Netflix brings back Mindhunter and they're oh. looking to a new, a new uh, serial killer, and next to him in, in prison, it's like two or three Bishop Ryder books, right? <laughs> That I would have to pause. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you'd be like, I made. I, it. I hope not, but yeah, <laughs> I made it. Yeah. Definitely spike sales. Yeah. I hate that I'm thinking yeah. like yeah, that, but probably, you know, it's like, yeah, it's like, like you're, 
your bike is like if you like the blood splatter copy of your book is on the front of cnn like you're (laughs) definitely going to see your amazon ranking increase i'm sorry i'm not saying that anyone should manipulate that situation for their own ends but it would help sales and maybe a movie option yeah be a movie made about it and everything so Bo, we have it laid out for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just follow, yeah, follow I the plan. I'm, I'm in. I want to get this. I want to get this movie made. Yeah, exactly. I don't want the serial killer endorsement, but but I do want the movie made. Yes. Yeah. So, how many stories are in here? Is it 15? Is that correct? 15 stories. 15, 15 stories. Yeah. Yeah. Fifty thousand words. Fifteen stories. Yeah. And we're looking at what and they Monday? Are Monday, Monday, the, re- the release. Yeah, June third. Uh, all these authors are going to resurrect Bishop Ryder. Yeah, one last ride. <laughs> Until the you next- said that, but you you just said you got another book coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Until yeah. the next one. But, no, the, the second yeah, to the last ride. The next one. <laughs> yeah, but I, I I know it's convoluted, but Jeremiah Abram has continued Bishop's struggle. So Bishop is dead. Okay. He's he's dead. This Will that be written writer, by the uh, ones you rejected for this one? <laughs> no, these are all written by me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I better stop teasing them about it. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, you Monday. Have, uh, <laughs> I do you have an ending in mind for Jeremiah? Or, or because I, I, I remember do. you telling us the um, bishop's ending was something that just kind of occurred to you. Uh, is there mm-hmm. something similar for Jeremiah as well coming up? Because if not, Paul has one. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, bishops was I'm like, okay, he can go out in a blaze of glory, or I can give him 40 years of chopping up rapists and pedophiles. I chose 40 years of chopping up rapes, rapists and pedophiles. So Jeremiah, I want to do something different, and I do do something different. And he doesn't die of cancer. He uh, he gets to fulfill Ryder's wish. So that's all I'll say about that. But there is a definitive answer, and he might have to pay for his crimes. Mm-hmm. We can find that out in the next book. Uh, the one after. <laughs> the third the third book from now. So this is the last one before the next Well, one. yeah. It's, I, the Abram Files has turned into a trilogy. Uh, so the next book out is called Like-Minded Individuals. And then the one after that is <laughs> Long Past Gone. I know it's crazy. I I do. I do think it's worth. It's worth calling out. Like I think Bo writes faster than maybe anyone I know, with the possible exception of Nick, who is just. I I think Bo is faster than I am. I I think, especially right now. No, I. I, Yeah, I think it looks like that, but it's 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 not like that. It's like (laughs) it does it does appear that way, but. Uh, sometimes you do get the ideas and Nick had mentioned that sometimes it's just because they're so straightforward these guys are right and one story ping pongs off another and I've always the way I write a prequel can create a sequel and sometimes it's just it's bonkers how I write I, I know I write different than other people so that could be part of it too but I, it's, I, I don't write every day. I, I don't. I wish I did. But sometimes there's been times of six months I don't write anything. Sometimes three months. And then sometimes I'll write straight for three months. So, Well, I took into consideration with my story that, that your, uh, your Bishop Ryer's tales are brief. You know, they're, they're fast. They're, so I was trying to keep mine in that kind of mm-hmm. that ballpark, which you, which you write. So that's what I was trying to. But it's hard to do that. Too. That's another thing too. We yeah. talk about horror was hard to write. It's hard to, and I I do like to write flash, so I, I try to keep that in the mind. But uh, yeah, I was I was definitely trying to keep it brief when I wrote this, and then uh, yeah, yeah. So at the beginning, I would say a... writer stories were anywhere from from seven hundred to fifteen hundred words. But now, on average, with a Jeremiah story, they're usually around two thousand, and they just bang off one another. Usually, there's twenty five. Uh, stories to one of my books now, and usually every story is r- r- roughly around two thousand words. Yeah. yeah. I did figured you give everybody a workout for the. Hmm? Did you give everybody a workout for their stories, or did you just let them make them as long or short as they wanted? As long, well, I think I capped it at 5,000, 1,500 to five thousand, and pretty mm-hmm. much everybody stick to it. Paul's was seven thousand, which, which that's fine. 
I can make Damn it, Paul. You know, acquisition. So yeah. this is all right. Yeah. So here's I it was such a good I story. Me, it had to go. Let me de- let me defend myself. <laughs> I I asked both Chad and Nick. I sent it to him early. I was like, I need to cut two thousand words out of it. They both said to me, I don't know where you can. Um and that yeah. at that point I, I reached out yeah. to to Bo. The funny part of it is his co-editor, Hector, gives me shit for exceeding word <laughs> counts all the time. So it was like on brand at a certain point. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I, re- I wrote under 5,000, so you, you got my words there. So you're good. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I reached out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, was, there, was only, there was only one over 5,000. <clears> And Paul. It was Paul. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that didn't follow the rules. <laughs> there you go. You got it. You got it. Well, Bo, it seems like you're on a uh, never-ending uh, farewell tour with the fish chef here. You're, you're like, you're like the, uh, every time, does, every time he comes on here, he's like, this is my last like, book. I'm never writing again. Yeah. I'm done. It's like, Bo is the I'm done. kiss of crime. You're, you're the kiss of indie writing. That's, that's, what, that's what's going on here. So, uh, we appreciate yeah. the fact that you yeah. wanted to celebrate the release with two dopes with microphones here. So uh, that's offensive, Jay. I'm so offended. No, when you call you're me. not. Come on. So simmer <laughs> down, you and your youngin. Um, you guys, thanks so much for nice, you know, to me and yeah, to me and Bishop. Bring, Ryder, and bring, you guys have always yeah. yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Bring bring your gang along with you this time. So, uh, Rob. James, Paul, Nick, and of course Megan. Thank you so much for coming by and uh, wanting to support your buddy Bo here. We appreciate it, and you know, agreeing to show up on the show here. This is um, fun. Yeah, this shit say, show of a show. I, I can't say the show does any wonders for anybody's career. <laughs> uh, no, but, it probably, uh, probably does. It's probably detrimental, to be honest. <laughs> but we appreciate uh, the time and chatting with us. Uh, any any final words about this uh, Bishop Writer Lives before we? get out of here and let you guys go spend your Friday nights doing what you do. I don't know what Kentuckians do. Sorry. James. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I had to Monday, say that, that, third. that horse is dead. I need to stop <laughs> eating that horse. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun book. It's fun, fun, Monday, fun. It is fun, fun. It's fun for the family. If your family is the man. Great family I'm gonna, fun. I'm going to get my kids and have like nightly read-alongs each story. Oh, yeah. to them. <laughs> be, be ready for the the Bishop of Rider kids book, you know the, yeah. the, uh... we, need maybe, the maybe we need the color, we need the coloring right. book. Get them warped young. Yeah. yeah, we'll do a pop up book and like the pop up be different weapons each time. Yes. Be, we need a paint by numbers book. Yeah, all the blood, all different blood colors of blood and stuff. Yeah, blood splatter. Yes, yes, I'm in. All right, Daddy, what, Daddy what's that person doing with the with the chainsaw? <laughs> you can't talk about that. Either. What hole's that? Oh, All right, yeah. Jay, let's end it now. <laughs> Jay. Yeah. For uh, Rob and James, Paul, Nick, Megan, and of course, Bo Johnson. I'm Jay. Thanks so much for uh, hanging out with us. That's Brad over on the other side there. It's been another exciting episode of Paper Cuts you guys love. We A know very it. fun episode, right? Fun. <laughs> fun, 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 fun. Make sure you pick this up on Monday. Uh, it's being sold everywhere. Uh, uh, murder shop to get books for <laughs> ideals. So Amazon, I'm guessing you can get it. And yep, yep. Down and out books. Yep. And down and out. There you go. Bishop Writer Lives. All right. Rock on guys. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thanks for having Love me. Love you, Jay. Bye guys. See you Monday. I know you do. Bye. Hey. Bye.